welcome to Feminist Wednesday's Beaver Talk. I'm your host, Erin Bagwell. Today we're chatting with Australian director, producer, and activist, Epiphany Morgan. Epiphany, welcome to Beaver Talk. Thank you, Erin. Thank you. <laughs> um, first of all, I just want to jump right in and say that I watched The Room, and like the first 10 minutes, I'm, you know, sitting with my boyfriend and I'm just like, this is bananas, like the whole premise and everything. And I was just so dumbfounded through the whole intro. And then, you know, by the end, I'm sobbing through like the entire ending. And it was just so wonderful and so heartwarming. So congratulations on such a fantastic documentary. So I'm just going to skip to my question about it. Your award-winning documentary about Australia's first state-approved heroin injection center, The Room, was phenomenal. Um, for those at home who haven't seen it, can you describe what the documentary is about and how you got involved? Sure. So um, I grew up in King's Cross in um, Sydney, Australia. Um, King's Cross was the kind of epicenter for a lot of serious drug taking and um, uh, people who live on the margins. So I had always kind of been aware of drug use. I'd always had a lot of empathy for drug users because I saw how they lived and how difficult it was. Um, so when I was encouraged to think of a documentary idea for, I was actually in film school when I when I made the film because it's a few years ago now um, ago and. Uh, yeah, and I thought, well, I always knew about this centre. I'd seen how King's Cross had really transformed over the years. It had just absolutely gone from being quite a dangerous place to still being a dangerous place. But really, you know, there weren't, I hardly saw a syringe on the street anymore. I wasn't seeing people overdose in alleyways or doorsteps or anymore. So I was really interested to see what, what was the cause of that. Did some research into the centre and absolutely fell in love. And the facts are just, you can't, you know, I went in going, oh, I'll, I'll do, you know, I'll show both sides. I'll show, you know, the support and the negative. And then I was like, but there's no reason for the negative because it is just absolutely amazing and what it's doing and how many people it's helping. And, I mean, 3,500 overdoses in nine and a half years yeah. and not one fatality is it's absolutely kind of... It's incredible. A lot of women tend to shy away from directing and leading roles on productions. Um, to do more kind of editing and storytelling. Why do you think this is and you know what motivates you to stay in the director's chair? It can be very, um, very challenging and I think that's probably why some women, it's not a welcoming environment necessarily that you want to get into sometimes yeah. um, because you, you're not surrounded by people who are necessarily very supportive or understand your life, your experiences, you as an individual. So in that sense, it's a, it's kind of you've got to break that ground and go forward into it, ready to prove yourself, ready to um, show the boys up, <laughs> basically. Um, which sometimes you can come across as bitchy, but I mean, I embrace Whatever. that. I embrace <laughs> that I'm emotional. I embrace that I'm hormonal. I embrace all of that that a woman is. You know, that I'm caring and empathetic because that really works for documentary filmmakers, you know. And that's why a lot of some documentary filmmakers are women and they're, you know, and they're, they're fantastic because they've got a level of empathy and compassion that most, maybe most men don't necessarily have. Um, you're also involved with that wonderful organization, Women Say Something. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the organization and how you're involved? Yeah, it's just really about encouraging women to, to, to say something that's important to them, to, to really face what's challenging in their own lives and, um, and share that with other women and, and make change, make positive change. Wonderful. Every week in our newsletter, we ask Betty is on our block two questions. What female is inspiring you right now and what makes you a badass bitch? So who, <laughs> what female in your life is inspiring you at the moment? Um, I have two friends who are um, 23, both of them are 23, and they have both, um, they're both in AA, and I think that that's absolutely amazing to be able to confront their, their demons, I guess, now, so early in their lives. Um, I know that they think they're weak because they deal with all these different addictions and they constantly, you know, 
two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back. And it's such a challenge every day. And the biggest part of it is about acknowledging what's what's wrong with you or what's, you know, what's um, upsetting you and really confronting that. But I just think that's the bravest thing. And it actually really, every time I talk to them, I just think, God, that's amazing, you know. You're 23 and you're already, you're already able to sit with everything that's that happened in your life and confront that every single day of your life. I just think that's so brave. So they, def they definitely inspire me. Yeah. And what makes you a badass bitch? <laughs> um, I think uh, most days, some days we all have our bad days, but most days I believe that I can do anything. Anything. So if I if I really wanted to become prime minister, I could become prime minister. You know, like it's really having that belief that whatever happens, I've got it. It'll all be cool because I've got it. So I'm about to embark on you know not working full time and not having that security of money to pursue documentaries, um, and that's really scary. But you, I can do it. It's cool. <laughs> so I think that's it, maybe. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, thank you so much. Um, it's been such a pleasure having you, and it's so wonderful to, to meet you. I feel like I know you through your film, but it's so nice to chat in person. <laughs>